Welpum, 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 <laughs> welpum. H three army. This is your leader, Fupish Maximus. I am joined here by Mother, Mother Fupicious. <laughs> this is a play on Teresa, but with Fupa. Um, the return of Mama Klein. We are the Mom Army now, Ethan. Mom armies. Come on. I love the Mom Army. How was it? The one and only. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, the one and only, is back. She's here. She's looking beautiful and healthy and wonderful. How does it feel not only to be the head of the mom army, but to be here in your bunker and your battle station once again? It feels great. And um, I feel like I'm forgetting a million stuff. Like, we, we, it's the first time we had to come here with the baby. Right. And it just feels like... Can we show that, Dan? Uh, we can, yeah. There, <laughs> there's the Ela's mom. <laughs> she was just feeding him and now he needs to burp. Yeah. That burp is very crucial. Yeah, he he feels that pain, but he like he struggles with that burp, man. <laughs> and it's all it's just he's like it's all you burp, you poop, and he works on those poops too. Like that's like a that full day mish. <laughs> of just like oh you can see his face like oh, you know. Yeah. But he's a little warrior, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. We went to the doctor and they said he's very tall. Yes. Very they said that he's strong. How and, do they tell that? And alert. <laughs> Wait, how can they tell he's strong? I guess because she was moving him and he was like resisting and, Dude, he, but, you know, like using his muscles. That little turd <laughs> has such a grip. Like sometimes I'll be holding him and he'll grab my neck and I'll be like, oh, dude, what the hell? Yeah. Okay. He's strong. So they actually, they rate your baby. I love that. RateMyBaby.com. They rate your baby on a percentile, like a standardized <laughs> test. Yeah. So he is in the 86th percentile on height, but everybody buckle up because he's 93 percentile on head size. <laughs> this kid's got a dome, dude. What the heck? That's crazy. He's got a huge head. But Big, beautiful brain. Let's not start to bully him because we love all size heads. He's going to be looking back at this episode. <laughs> like, yeah. Fuck you, Dad. <laughs> My, but I, well, anyway, yeah, I know, I gotta be careful now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he's gonna watch this. But I'm saying that j lovingly. He, look, as a matter of fact, he's got a big head. <laughs> he's a baby. You see, that's fucked up. I would never say that to, like, joke like that with a conscious son. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't even know him. Maybe he's down. Yeah, I feel like he'll be down. He's a goofball. Yeah, he's a champ. So, I don't know if we mentioned sponsors. Oh, Sorry. shit. We got distracted. Hold on, I gotta pay for t uh, Theodore's College Real Fest. <laughs> Thank you to Dollar Shave Club, Audible, DoorDash, and Stamps.com. We love and appreciate all you guys. Thank you so much. Well, guys, let's get right into the show. We've got Mama Klein back with us. <laughs> now, cue the music, because we have a little announcement here to make. We have come in crazy. We have come in out of our minds, because today... Oh, uh, we are doing a Teddy Fresh 50% off. <laughs> 50% off special. We're talking. <laughs> we're talking. Uh, Bob Hart shirt. I Heart Mob. All the colors. We're new here. Tan, blue, purple. TF Heavy Cotton. The Mom Chanel sweater. I heart you sweater. You look, it's all on sale 50%. Ah! So get on over to teddyfresh.com and check out the sale that is true that we have really lost our minds. Hila, thank you for cutting that. Exactly what he said. <laughs> Time to We, still. <laughs> these are actually all stuff that we really like. But we're trying to move inventory, you know? We gotta, we gotta move gotta on, baby. The new, stuff. the new stuff. So... You know? And a lot of times you guys say, you know, I want this, but it's too expensive, so... Preach, sister. Now is the time. All right. Now we've got all that out of the way. <laughs> um, let's talk about this video. This is a really deep cut. And, and I played it last week, but I didn't fully explain it. I mean, I didn't talk about it. But there's this guy on YouTube named Tubes. And this is such a deep cut. It's the guy cut together every Philip DeFrank wrote... Frank Franco intro of him saying sup. <laughs> so let me give you an example here. 
So he went through the archives. Oh this is 11 minutes long. And cut every sut. Oh now, there's just a lot to take in. The background, you can see everything. I feel like I'm choking. Like he never gets to breathe, you know? Right. <laughs> it's like he's yeah. suffocating. Um, but it becomes this really... So you can see the stuff in the background moving. And... It becomes, oh, he gets tired. It becomes really hypnotic, you know? <laughs> and all the, it's like and ASMR. No, it's more like a fever dream. <laughs> but it starts to lose its meaning and even the motion itself. I mean, I challenge you to watch all 11 minutes of this. You know? It kind of slows down, doesn't it? Well, sure, he does change his pace. You could probably tell a lot about the man's life yeah. based on the speed of the sup at the time, you know what I mean? Like, you could analyze and be like, yo, your sup's around August, you know, July, or, you know, October. We're, we're, we're getting, right, slow, sluggish sups. Where if you go to January, February, March, very quick and chirpy sups. I like how the bar just shows and one at the top left and never makes it. <laughs> one thing I will say that has not changed throughout any of this is his fucking hair. Oh my god. Like his hair, I don't know how he does that man, but his hair does not ever change. There's like a candle that keeps coming and going in the background. Yeah, I wonder why they changed the visual with the background at all. They probably just dust it off and then <laughs> shit gets misplaced. That's good that they dust off the background because oh, I yeah. don't think we've ever done that. That's true, we <laughs> have it. Don't sub check me, dude. Don't sub check me, bro. I don't have a sub check. When I open the show, I w my goal, by the way, with this is to see how long I can play it during a conversation. How long is it? It's 11 minutes. It's every wow. sub ever performed. See, when I open the show, I have nothing. I don't know what's the word that's going to come out of my head. Yeah. So you can't sub check me. We've always had trouble with like having an intro. Right. Which is why I feel like we always make fun of other people's intros. Cause right. Because I'm envious. Yeah. I wish... I think there's something very, you know, powerful about knowing what's the word that you, yeah. where you know where to start. People need that. It's like how people need a routine. Right. They need to know what to expect from you, but we are not people of routine. No, we're not. I agree. We cannot Unlike have an the, intro. the break up. <laughs> Zach's about to snap back here. Zach's, Zach's the first one. Break. Is everyone tuning out? Should I stop this? <laughs> well, turn it down, Zach, so it's not. We, like, we turned it down. I mean, it's it's a bed. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but it's pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. was, that, was our conversation completely? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the useless? stuff has got to go. I mean, the joke is so. Anyway, I guess I guess okay. you get the idea. See, that was three minutes. It felt like twenty. Wow, I thought it was at least six. Yeah, I really thought we were at six. What up, sup army? <laughs> um, I challenge you to watch all eleven minutes of that. That is very impressive about his hair. <laughs> His I don't hair, know how do you achieve bro. such consistency. What the f? <laughs> well, now he's got a hair product, so apparently the guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> but he's got that hair, like that really thin, straight hair, where you could be like, yeah, the guys that I always fucking hated in high school, where I was like, the guy goes like, yeah, and it's always the and same. It's like he takes off a hat and he's like, he just came out of the barber. Yeah, I was like, oh wow, you're cool. And girls in high school love that too. Well, there's, I used to be envious of girls like that, too. With, like, just mm. the straight hair and mm. don't need to do anything. It's just, right. like, always perfect. Right. Fuck those people. I bet they're mating somewhere and having kids with perfect hair. <laughs> yeah, well, my kid's head's fucking huge, so fuck your perfect <laughs> hair. My kid's head is in the 93 percentile, bitch. Our kind of hair is like you put gel and the hair still curls however you want it. Gel, gel does gel. nothing. <laughs> Theodore's hair is gonna be freaking. He's gonna have like Hermione hair, <laughs> you know, crazy. For all you Harry Potter fans out there, Hermione hair. Are you saying it right? Yes. Hermione. Oh yeah. Right. Yes, Hila. Sorry. Don't make me hit you with the sup bomb. <laughs> um, tubes. I gotta give a shout out to your boy Tubes, who went through the effort. By the way, as impressive as Phil DeFranco's hair is. This guy went through every goddamn episode and cut the sup, so shout out to him. Here, let's see. He said, this took way too long to edit. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. I, I'd actually wonder um, how long it did I wish take. that he said how many videos it took. Oh, someone says running it at two times speed. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Everyone's like, okay, fine, they're moving on. Nope. No. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming you guys find this as interesting as me. Because I want to just spend the whole episode on this. I, I personally find it to be very fun and enjoyable. But here we go. Two times speed. <laughs> that is a good call. That is much better. <laughs> I love the candles. Like, they keep just... Whoa, it gets faster. You're right, Eli. <laughs> Somehow you can feel it more on the speed up. <laughs> But then, if we slow it down wow. to half speed, what happens? Nothing. So he kind of either has like the sub that goes this way. <laughs> yeah. Or this way. That's what I was saying too. His hand, he has different hand motions. <laughs> it's this though. You can really study it. What is that, by the way? Like, what is that? Sup, you beautiful bastard. What is this motion though? <laughs> with the hand. It's almost like grabbing you for a hug so what is this hand though because you do this like hey sup. that's the one that goes behind What's your this? back and like taps your back right right okay so he's like going <laughs> in for a hug i but don't then know he's got the other one where he yeah the other one is where he slaps him in the face really yeah oh this one too <laughs> yeah. wish there was reverb on it <laughs> sorry everybody this is the worst episode we actually have interesting <laughs> stuff to talk about <laughs> All right, I'll stop okay. now. We have good stuff to talk about, I swear. Now everyone take a deep <laughs> breath. In. What up, SUP Army? So we are the SUP Army. Now, so did Theodore burp? I need to know. Has Theodore burped? What's going on with the burp updates? <laughs> oh, is he changing it? He sounds like I heard. He yeah. burped and he pooped and peed. So wow. We're wow. Holy wow. Yeah. Perfecto right now. Ah. <laughs> Dude, your mom's been busy back there. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, so UMG, these mother frickin' heckers. UMG, we all know them as universal uh monkey gobblers. <laughs> universal music group, what is it? That that's right, yeah. Y universal monkey ball gobblers. These guys have been running amok on YouTube for so long, claiming every freaking video imaginable and we're all so pissed off and fed up with UMG. So how do you suppose we all react when Susan Wajanski, the one and only, uh, tweeted out, Excited to partner with UMG to remaster some of the most iconic music videos of all time on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's like, how about before you partner up with the enemy of the people, <laughs> you tell them, hey, stop. Stop destroying our platform and taking the livelihood from all of our creators. And of course, everybody rips into her, including myself. I will. Sometimes I, I just wonder how can they be so disconnected? Because, like UMG, like I've heard it from so many YouTubers by now, and I, I barely spend time on Twitter. But it's almost every time I open Twitter, there's something about yeah. them. I don't know. They're tone deaf. They're just. <coughs> they don't really. The thing is, they don't really mingle with YouTubers. Yeah. Like Susan goes on a PR tour. Where she meets like the most insulated, kid-friendly YouTubers. I mean, she met us. That was nice, and I mm -hmm. and I told her I do about this stuff. Appreciate that she came. Here. Absolutely, but she'll go like once a year and visit like uh, Liza Koshi, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Oh man, YouTube's great. I make 10 CPM. I'm so rich. Everything's perfect. I never get claimed. You guys are doing such a fantastic job." And Susan's like, "Oh, thank you. All right, I'm on my way to go see. Um, I'm on my way to go see uh, uh, uh. Superwoman." Yeah, and she's like, I'm always on trending, and my CPMs are so good, and you guys treat me so well. And then Susan's like, Oh, YouTube is the best. We're doing such a good job. <laughs> and then she comes and sees me, and I'm like, <laughs> shit, and The house like, oh, is what burning. Time is what time is it? I, I... <laughs> no, she was very receptive to my comments. Um, but they are tone deaf. They're just not involved. So everybody's blasting her. I said, I will not be viewing these. Until UMG pledges to improve their flagrant copyright abuse until they have no grounds to ask support of YouTube community for which they harm every day. And I'm saying hashtag boycott UMG. I'm not going to watch this shit. I didn't ask for this. I don't need to see it in HD. You, you, you're taking away their charm anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't need to read. What do you, um, George Lucas? <laughs> Got to remaster the classics? No. Can we agree that George Lucas is a big fat idiot? It's gonna be a hot take. What does Dan think? The, 
Dan? I'm a big fat idiot? I mean... <laughs> no, 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 I take it back. He's a chinless idiot. Uh, he is undoubtedly a chinless idiot. That is that is completely true. But I, I, I hated George Lucas from the moment he added that extra canteen scene in the originals with this music. I, I, I agree with that. The man is a genius, but... No, yeah. Zach. No, no, no. But, but, but a man that created Star Wars. I mean, come on. Yeah. He didn't write even the screenplays, as I understand it, of the originals. Well, he, uh, he did and he didn't. He had okay. additional writers. Well, he's I a thought, mixed bag. Okay, you know what? I'm not. I'm, I'm, why? Kidding. Why am I? Come on. We all know. Yeah, that but he, he he did fuck up <laughs> a lot of those scenes, though. Yeah, I agree. we all agree Special he's at least stuff. chinless. Yes, sure. <laughs> Definitely yeah, yeah. doesn't have a chin. <laughs> you're gonna say at least one genius. testicle. <laughs> one testicle. <laughs> George Lucas, you got to see his like his beard is awesome. It's epic. That's some nice hair. No, his facial hair is fucking fire, dude. But he's got no chin. I don't know why I'm giving the guy shit. <laughs> Where, what, what was I even talking about? Where were we? Okay, re making remaster. A <laughs> Poor George Lucas, he's sitting here minding his own business. <laughs> what the fuck did I do? <laughs> I can only imagine if like George Lucas is watching this somehow, or and it's just like all of a sudden. Yeah, George Lucas ain't watching this. <laughs> Don't kid yourself, idiot. Talk about chinless fat idiot. Speak for yourself. Um. <clears throat> I, I kept going. I said, this tweet was claimed by UMG, the enemy of the people, destroyer of worlds, undoer of YouTube. <laughs> Mr. Beast posted an image. They said they literally could use the hundreds of thousands of dollars they profited off of just my videos alone. And he posted a... Look at that. These are all UMG claims. And some... So, claiming is one thing. But the examples you see time and time again are so egregious. That's what really messes you up. For example, there's a video where Mr. Beast l simply hums the tune briefly, mm -hmm. and the whole video gets claimed. There's one from Gus. Here, I've got all the examples. Um, since when can you not hum a song? I s ever since UMG got their hands on, on copyright, baby. Some like, people in general, that's claim. not a thing, right? Yeah, and some people even claim uh, just for, like, saying the name of a song. Like, a, so, the yeah. title of a famous song. <laughs> but that's not... Uh, claim. If you humming a tune? Well, how... I mean, I don't... Honestly, I don't know. But why would you... I don't know. I, I, I doubt that. Yeah. Like, there was, a, there was a big legal case between UMG, surprise, surprise, hmm. and some lady who took a video of her baby with music playing in the background. And they filed a DMCA to remove the video. Like, like people are watching this baby dancing to listen to music in the background. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even like a complete song. It was just a snippet. They took that, they took them to Supreme Court and they said, fuck you, MG. <laughs> and, and she won. She won. Nice. And so... <clears throat> so there is some justice. Of course there is, but the it's like, who's going to go all the way to Supreme Court because UMG, mm -hmm. they've got bit nothing to lose. I'm going to boycott all of this because UMG's continued blatant and flagrant abuse of copyright is a, is a detriment to the entire YouTube ecosystem. I'd ask that Team YouTube cancel this partnership until they make good faith efforts to improve their methods. Boycott UMG. Yeah, they didn't answer. They don't give a fuck about me. <laughs> Susan's like, uh... We spent like millions of dollars on this, so you can fuck yourself. <laughs> 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 um, I have some great examples here. Let's see. <clears throat> Here's some YouTubers responding. I want to show Gus's video because this one is kind of epitomizes uh, this yes. kind of bullshit. I made a video a couple of weeks ago about the Bohemian Rhapsody thing that's going this around. Is if Gus you don't know, Johnson, friend of the show. There's a lot of YouTubers that were pretending to hear Bohemian Rhapsody for the first time. So I made this video about it where I talk about the issue, the video is called Why is Everybody Lying About Bohemian Rhapsody? I talk about the issue, I don't play even a fucking microsecond oh, wow. of the song, yeah. not at all. I remember Boom. the what video. What I wake up to today? Oh, this claim was manually claimed, not even an automatic detection. Some That's motherfucker, insane. fuck you, went in and manually yep. claimed this video as containing stuff from EMI Music Publishing. Manually fucking claim. EMI is UMG, right, Dan? Uh, yeah, uh, UMG bought EMI about uh, five, six years ago. So yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that's when they got 
That's when EMA, EMI started claiming everything on YouTube. Um, so I, I remember his video. He was in his room just ranting like, why does he was just saying, kept going like, why does everyone keep pretending like they don't know? Yeah, that's the video that we yes. both really like. Yes. But so he doesn't even play no. it even for a second. No. Wow. Because I didn't remember if he plays it or not. He doesn't. It's like a one take of him. <laughs> so Crazy. this is the kind of madness that's going on here. And UMG is definitely getting a pass because I happen to know from being close with YouTube that when people make these kind of flagrantly abusive claims, they can get kicked out of the system. Yet UMG owns 30% of all the music in the world. And of course, mm -hmm. instead of, you know, reprimanding them, it's, hey, guys, we're excited to announce that UMG's big ass, uh, their cock that's thicker than the <laughs> circumference of the globe is in my ass. <laughs> Susan Wojcinski. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you know their logo's a globe. So it's like a big ass <laughs> anal bead. <laughs> no. It's not? <laughs> She's taking a fat one, dude. I don't know. She. I don't like to... <clears throat> I'm just kidding. She's a sweet lady. Yeah. She's just into anal fetish, probably. <laughs> if it's UMG. I'll be into anal fetish for UMG. Those motherfuckers are rich. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Who you kidding, huh? Uh, we were... Slam on them with a regular <laughs> schmegula. You trying to cricket me or something? No, I'm, I'm actually curious about all this new sound <laughs> effects. Cheers. It's just a lot of Ethan Bradbury. <laughs> <a lot> of <laughs> um, <clears throat> we were looking at the scope of UMG. They truly are such a behemoth. I mean, these motherfuckers need to be broken up by the government for having a monopoly because they own every goddamn one. Yeah, I mean, it's it's over 30% of all of the published music nowadays. And it's like, if you just look at their list of big <laughs> artists, it's it's... It's everybody. It's all of, like the superstars. They're all under that. It's like <coughs> in all genres too. So if you want to see what all the hubbub's about, and by the way, I'm sure I'm going to get claimed now for showing a New York Times article. It's called. This goes out to the guy who's manually claiming this podcast right now. <laughs> it's called fair use. There's an exception for journalism. Oh yeah, it's literally from a New York Times article, guaranteed to be claimed. So if you want to know what all the hubbub's about, this is it. SD. Oh man! Such a small difference. Holy shit, bro! Why Billy Idol? Does anyone one? really care? That was probably their. It's an best. iconic video from the eighties. Does anyone care? I don't know. You, Zach, you're into this shit. Do you care? I mean, not really. No. I, I mean, kind of prefer it in the SD. Exactly. That's what yeah, I'm it gives it a vibe. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. People today put filters to go back to that. Right. Look. Exactly. Why are we forgetting like the f goddamn past happened? Like, do you know? Uh, hello. No one wants HD. It's like, like, let's go rewrite history. Let's go back to the, like, the first photos and make them HD and then forget that there was ever early photography. It's all about the vintage look. People are buying all these, like, Polaroid cameras now, trying to go back to what it used to be. I hate this. The streaming service of Universal Music Group have teamed up to revamp more than thousand, a thousand videos from artists, including Lady Gaga. She's not that old. <laughs> That's right. That's another. They show a frame from that, and it's from a video from nine years ago. Something what the like fuck that? is wrong with you? Why are they yeah, calling like Lady Gaga old? Remastered. If I was Lady Gaga, I'd be like, bitch, I, that was well, I'm I guess not that old. Things used to be I much guess. worse quality, like when you watch the first episodes of Curb. Yeah, it's pretty shocking. It's like square it doesn't even fit the <laughs> <laughs> like the dimensions of the tv tom petty billy, billy idol and spice girls well, you know they're just trying to revenate some more uh revenate some buzz fuck get it together ethan they're trying to generate <laughs> more revenue. revenue and buzz being like oh you guys remember these videos that you nobody watched anymore because they're 40 years old it's not gonna work assholes you're already getting all the revenue you could ever imagine from claiming everyone's video and this is the insanity too is that they're gonna claim this whole two-hour podcast because of some audio, some visual content that we're analyzing in a New York Times article. They've got a great business model because they don't even need investors or anything. They're just... <laughs> there's no recourse. There's no motivation for them really not to. From a business standpoint, they should just claim every video on YouTube. I mean... and yeah, with, with Mr. Beast's views, like he said, oh, yeah. his videos alone would be you know, so much money. And I talked to him... And I'm like, dude, you gotta... He doesn't even dispute them. 
Because he's afraid. I, I don't know why. He just doesn't want to deal with it. And I try to talk to him and be like, dude, you got to dispute this shit. So Mr. Beast is pulling at 15, 20 million views. And these guys are just laughing. Mm-hmm. That's like $50,000 a pop. They're like, thank you. Come again. <laughs> Sorry. To all my Indian friends. That was Abu. Oh. Apu. The problem with Apu. <laughs> thank you. Come again. That's uh, UMG. So here's what's going on. Um, this is what's happening is that there's what's been called bounty hunters. And it started happening like this, getting really, really bad, like shit, like what's going on with Gus. Um, by the way, guess who took down our, our last podcast and blocked it worldwide? UMG, baby, let's go. That's right. I'm tr- I w- is there some kind of play on their name that we can I know, start I'm calling thinking their... about that. Universal. You guys submit your good ideas. Yeah, we got to come of you up out with there, something. Someone at home is like, I got the perfect one. So <laughs> send us emails, podcast at hgsreproduction.com. Your mom gay. Your mom gay? Got him. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> uh, but you, so you monkey yeah, monkey's got, not funny. No, monkey's not good. You. This is probably not the time to brainstorm. <laughs> so you guys sent us. You guys are smarter and funnier than I am. So here's what's going on. YouTube has their automated system that everyone's been using, <clears throat> but YouTube, because they're reasonable, doesn't always send things that are claimable because maybe there's too small of an amount or maybe they don't detect it and send it to the copyright holder because they think that they see the gray area and so they don't think that it's claimable. They've made that decision within their own automated system. Mm -hmm. But what these bounty hunters have done is that they've developed their own algorithms that circumvent the content ID system and are scanning content uh, more finely. Mm -hmm. And they approach big companies like UMG and say, hey, YouTube's not doing a good job. There's tons of money out there that you're not claiming. I'm going to go make you a million bucks. I'm going to give you half of it. You don't have to worry about anything. You're just going to get free money. For them, they're like, no brainer, but dope. <laughs> the problem is that they have no connection to what's going on with these bounty hunters. They have no, they don't understand the consequence. They don't understand the methods. And they don't understand um, that there's no re- there it, how toxic it is. And these bounty hunters know exactly what they're doing. In fact, I have intel that they have actual individuals watching the uploads of all big YouTuber channels. So when you see hmm. a manual claim on something like Mr. Beast whistling or Gus not, you know, hmm. there's no way a bot... There's certain points where there's no way a bot would be able to tell. So they have, they don't care about the small chips. They care about Mr. Beast's 20 million views. So they have one individual watching his videos, and then they see it, they get a bounty too. So it's all this shake da- shaking down. So they automatically, they get it fast too, right? Because they want every penny. So the minute he uploads it, you got one of these fuckers, maybe even five of them, because they're competing, to find that bounty. They send it to the company, they do a manual claim, everyone gets paid except Mr. Beast. That's crazy. Yeah. So, um... So it's actually not even that smart. Because I thought they have their own, like, algorithm. It's both. It's both. It's both. Mm. It's very... I mean, it's it's not that sophisticated, but it is also. Mm-hmm. But it's just... It's such a problem. Something's got to... Yeah. Something's got to give here. And I think that companies like UMG need to be educated that making a couple extra million dollars a year at the cost of destroying the YouTube ecosystem is not really that valuable. How much is UMG worth? $10 trillion? I can only imagine if they're as big as you guys are saying. UMG value. Five fifty billion. (laughs) Okay? Sounds about right. Get the fuck out of here. Fifty billion, cocksucker. Like a million dollars from YouTube matters. Such cunts. You gotta start watching your language. Really? Is that because of Theodore? Oh. 
What can I say? They're fucking. Oh, we're gonna do no cursing in front of him. I'm I'm working on that. I'm cr- at home. I'm not cursing. Mm-hmm. But here on the podcast, I'll <laughs> say what the fucking cunt bitch. <laughs> no, I shouldn't. I shouldn't curse you, right, Elo. Um, fuck UMG. Sorry, Elo. Forgive me. Boycott UMG. <laughs> we're thinking of making a video about it. We've got a whole damn thing we're working on, me and the guys. We got some testimonials from big YouTubers. Because we gotta mm-hmm. boycott UMG, we gotta hit them where it hurts, we gotta tell the artists, we gotta tell the company, everyone's gotta know what's going on here. This is the problem with them yeah. being so big though, it's hard to boycott them, because it's like... Yeah, you can't... Your, your favorite your favorite artist, like, almost guaranteed, that's part of UMG, mm-hmm. so don't listen to them anymore. Yeah. You know? I completely hard, agree with you, Dan. completely agree with you, that's why we're trying to think of creative ways but, to get them to notice. Yeah, I guess like you said, they need to be educated themselves probably of yeah. the problem they're creating. We just need their marketing manager to take a notice and be like, oh, what is this? This is bad PR for us. We need to change this. Mm-hmm. Although the marketing manager is probably the one with all that extra revenue looking good. <laughs> so, But someone up high up has got to be like, oh, UMG's name is garbage on YouTube. Meanwhile, everyone keeps buying their records because nobody cares. No, <laughs> uh, we have a thought. We have an idea. But most of all, it, it kind of sucks to see YouTube, of all people, who's supposed to be our ally, being like, Oh, UMG's big ass, big cock, feels so good in my ass. Shout out to UMG. <laughs> They're worth $50 billion. We love UMG <laughs> and beads. I think that works as long as you're saying YouTube. But not a specific not name. Not Susan. I didn't say Susan. Yeah, you did. No. <laughs> but she's the CEO. If it was a guy, I would say that too. I love anal play. <laughs> reach around. Give me a reach around, baby. Hey. Okay, whatever. We're going to take a break, guys. We have so much more to get to when we return. So don't freaking even think about going away. You know those times when every day feels the same, like you're on autopilot, how you're so caught up in your routine that you forget to take care of yourself. Well, Dollar Shave Club makes it easy to take care of yourself when that happens. It's that quality product, baby, that makes you feel, smell, look at your gosh darn best. I get everything I need from Dollar Shave Club without going to the store. Let's start here with this meaty, weighty, beautiful razor that is probably the only razor on the market that doesn't give me razor burn. I use it on the back of my neck. I have a beard, so you know I use it there. Is it there? You don't want to know where I use it down there. Nothing makes a razor glide over your skin like that shave butter boy. You gotta feel this butter on your face to know what I'm talking about. And you'll say to yourself, mmm, butter. They've got pretty much everything. Amazing shave stuff. They've got the razors. They've got the body wash. They've got the shampoo. They've got the toothpaste. You name it. They've got it. It's all happening. Their their body wash s- smells fantastic. You're gonna want to put that in your butt crack too. Everything goes in the butt crack, including the meaty the the heavy meaty razor ends. But that's up to you. That's not their recommended use. That's just something I like to get my morning off right. Dollar Shave Club has spent years developing, crafting, and refining their products. They're so much better than anything. I've ever used. You can get a Dollar Shave Club starter set, boom, for just five bucks. It comes with everything you need to feel great. Get a great shave. The executive razor, the shave butter, the face cleanser. You're going to love it as much as I do, and I do love it. Get your starter set for just $5 at dollarshaveclub.com slash h3. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash h3. Listening makes us smarter and more connected people. There's no better place to listen. Audible members choose three titles every month. One audiobook plus two Audible originals that you can't hear anywhere else. You just go to A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash H3 podcast or text H3 podcast to 500-500 and browse their unmatched selection of audio content. Most of, uh, this is what I want to tell you about. I've been listening to The Witcher, a game that I and many of us gamer boys out there love. And 
I don't, I don't know that everyone knows, but the whole Witcher universe was built off these novels that existed before. I think there's something like 10 novels that built and expanded this big, beautiful world. So I highly recommend with a new, uh, there's a Witcher TV series coming out on Netflix, which is super exciting. And I highly recommend you guys get into it now. Get in on those details, man. The Witcher novels are on Audible, and I definitely check them out. Um, start listening with a 30-day trial and your first audiobook plus two audible originals are free when you go to audible.com slash h3 podcast or text h3 p-o-d-c-a-s-t to 500 500 get witcher for free freaking listen to audible gay okay? okay it's dinner time you're fat you're starving, your stomach hurts, you don't know what to do to go to eat. Sound familiar? Uh, yeah, every day, every night of my life. Guess what? With DoorDash, you don't need to get up from the couch, and you don't need to cook a meal, and you definitely don't need to clean it up anymore either. DoorDash connects you to your favorite restaurants in your city. Boom. Ordering is easy. Just use the DoorDash app and choose what you want to eat, and a dasher will bring it to you any where you are. Not only is that burger place you love on DoorDash already, but over 310,000 other amazing restaurants are too. DoorDash connects you with door-to-door -door delivery in over 3,300 cities in all 50 states and Canada. Well, Canada. I'm surprised anyone goes up there. Order from your local go-tos or choose from your favorite chains like Chipotle, Wendy's, Chick-fil-A, and the Cheese Factory. Don't worry about dinner, guys. Let dinner come to you. Take a day off for Christ's sake. You deserve it with DoorDash. Here's the special offer that's going to blow your freaking mind. Right now, our listeners get $5 off their first order of $15 or more when you download DoorDash app and enter promo code H3. Did I hear a free $5 on your dinner order? Sorry, say that again. That's $5 off your first order when you download the DoorDash app from the App Store and enter promo code H3. Again, that's promo code H3 for $5 off your first order from DoorDash. Nobody's got time to go to the post office. You're busy. We're all busy. So who's going tr through traffic, parking, lugging? You got to lug your packages. It's a freaking hassle. Give me a break. The year is 2019. Let's start acting like it with stamps.com. They bring all the amazing services of the U.S. post office right to your computer. Whether you're a small office sending invoices, an online seller shipping out products, or even a warehouse sending thousands of packages a day, stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Simply use your computer to print official U.S. U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. Once your mail is ready, you just hand it off to your mail carrier or drop it in a mailbox. It's that simple. With stamps.com, you get five cents off every first class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail. So it's even cheaper. Give me a break. It's a no-brainer. Stamps.com, saving you time and money. It's no wonder over 700,000 small businesses already use stamps.com. Right now, uh, my, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital skill without any long-term commitment. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone fun at the top of the homepage and type in h3 that's stamps.com look for that micro microphone and enter h3 glad to have you back Hila. thank you it's nice, nice to be back it's nice to have my wing mom cheers <laughs> my wing mom back speaking of boycotts something disgusted me almost as much as this umg business possibly even more our boy jack jack's film friend of the show upstanding citizen and as everybody knows, has the record for the deepest dab. <laughs> Fortnite ripped off his fucking deep dab. Didn't credit him. Didn't ask him for permission. Didn't even be like, "Hey, really? I'm a, I'm a." They're making money, potentially millions of dollars off this deep dab. So I'm Watch quite this literally shit. about to purchase uh, my own. Emote. This is not okay. And we so need quite... to rally the troops. The H three H three army. Wow. Is Wait, so that's the same story as the. The guy from the Fresh Prince. Carlton. Yeah. Yeah. Except the difference is that I, I feel like I feel like there is a difference. One being that that's an old an individual. shit. Two, he's an individual who, who he developed this deep dab. Mm -hmm. He had a whole video about the deepest dab possible. Okay. And and number three, you know what the biggest reason is? This is my friend. <laughs> All right. It's not cool. I tweeted out. What's the C? C so what's your opinion about that? Seriously. Of what? Do you think they owe him anything? Fortnite? 
Yeah. Motherfucking yes, they owe him. You do? They should pay up, man. Well, watch this video okay. and you tell me afterwards. But the F- H3, H3 Army, I'm your General Fupish Maximus, and we are going to war. Finally, we found something to go to war with. <laughs> CEO of uh, Fortnite. What's the f- Epic Games, right? He has uh, a yeah, Twitter account. Games. Tim Sweeney. Look at this nerd. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. But pay up! <laughs> pay Jack! <coughs> Who else? Tweet all these all these Epic Game guys. How much are they worth? Uh, 15 billion. Yeah, you can afford to pay him a couple hundred thousand. Which is what you owe him. Maybe even anything. So let me see the video. Yeah, okay. I just want to... We need a call to action, but here we go. Literally about to purchase uh, my own emote in Fortnite. (laughs) (laughs) Called the Deep Dab. Let's take a look. That's what Jack called it. (laughs) That's me! (laughs) I'm Siri, can we play that again? That's me, man. They're so that's shameless. My dab. Yeah, that's that is my fucked. deep dab. Oh no, I need to get some V bucks first. Let me do that. Let's get some V bucks. All right, how you much guys, is two hundred V bucks? Do we know? I used my code, Real Jacks Film. Do you, does anyone play Fortnite? How much is two hundred V bucks? Um, I'm not sure exactly. I'll look it up. Look Wait, it up. what is this? The code? Oh, it, it, Fortnite has this thing where you can um, make a code so that when you buy it, it helps support that person a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's nothing. Does Jack it? set it up okay. himself. He told me right before, he told me like uh, this morning that he's made $300 from it. Which he shouldn't be, he shouldn't even be, they probably made, th- you know, $30,000 from mm-hmm. his code. But with the millions of people playing this, they don't even know that it, where it came from. And the Deep Dab is such an epic, original concept that he personally invented. So do you think that they, they own like a license fee or what would you? Okay, truthfully, it's like, probably legally seriously. gray. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So there's good practices and there's bad practices. Is it legally? Uh, is it legal what they did? Probably, because mm-hmm. the Carlton thing got thrown out, as far as I'm aware. Although Jack may uh, have it did be- get thrown out exactly. That that's actually still mm-hmm. pending. Um, okay. Well, probably because it's hard to prove that Jack has ownership over this. Well, no. The problem is that you can't. Patent a dance move or something like that mm. something some kind of weird thing, but I think that even Jack's films has a better claim to owning this than Carlton does Yeah, by far because Jack made a whole video about it and a whole develop co- video about developing the concept They use the exact same also, name. It's like a it's like a comedy bit by a comedian in a way Exactly. So I think if Jack wanted to sue them, which I'm sure he doesn't, if he wanted to go up against a 20 billion or like a, you know, 20 billion dollar company as an individual, he's not probably going to get very far. That's why I'm saying there's good practices and there's bad practices. What they're doing here is a very bad, Mm -hmm. bad practice, very bad, uh, bad faith. Anti-creator, anti-individual practice. This is the big guy versus the little guy. If they were good, if they were good practices, which you do see in companies sometimes. For example, um, great practice was with um, what was the name? Overkill in uh, Payday Two. Mm-hmm. Such a great practice they did with us, where they were very open-handed. We worked together. They wanted to put us in the game. Now, if they wanted to put this dab in the game, they should have been in touch with Jack from the beginning. They should have said, hey, we're going to pay you. And they should even have collaborated and been like, you know what? Let's do a collaboration where you announce. And he would have loved it. Yes. And talked about it. It would have been a wholesome thing for everybody, but they, they essentially stole. And I, do, I think, frankly, he does have a good legal case, you know? I think he does. It's like they stole his joke. Right. Which... Well, watch this. Like, I mean, it's like the same thing in comedy where, like, it's not illegal, but it's mm-hmm. really bad. Mm-hmm. Like, no one's going to respect you. That's right. Except it's even worse because you guys are worth $20 billion. And, yeah. and they're selling it. Yeah. It's not like you go buy. I mean, yeah, joke is one a, thing, but it's like, buy this deep price. dab. Yeah. And also, I don't know if they called the Carlton the Carlton. I doubt it because that would prove they stole right. it from him. But, this but is, Jack called it the deep dab. Yeah. Watch this. Let's buy my own emote. What is that, like two bucks? Damn. Yeah, I looked it up. A uh, hundred right bucks it. is a dollar. So here's so. what happened. Yesterday, a ton of you guys sent me screen caps and videos and GIFs of a supposed leak in the next Fortnite update or something. And all of these leaks included 
this deep dab as an emote. And thank you guys so much for sending this to me. Fortnite and Epic Games did not contact me about this. I had no prior knowledge that this emote was going into the game. And by the way, can we just compare the two moves? Look at this. Because it's, identical. it's, yeah, it's, it's identical. the same thing. You can't be like, oh yeah, that kind of looks like it. No, no. They, it's practically mocap. Like you would have thought I went in the studio, him. put on a mocap suit. It's the same thing it. they did to Carlton. When you watch them side by side, you're like, oh, yeah. they just captured that. Yeah. Also, he's the only man capable who, of doing a deep dab that Very deep. <laughs> he's trained professional. He's like the yogi master that's punched a piece of wood in the same place like a million times, and therefore his fist is hard as rock, and he's the only one that can punch it with an inch away from it. Follow me? Not really, but faithful <laughs> readaptation <laughs> of my terrible video from exactly two years ago to the my day, lowest which deepest is dab. Wow, that's from two so years ago. All of these yeah, time he was ahead of his time. Of course, this, Jack is always ahead of his time. He's like such a. I thought it was a new video, dude. Jack is that always comes out with these gems where it's like the deepest dab, my deepest dab. <laughs> two years later, Fortnite's picking it up. Get <laughs> real. Dude, I want Jack to- I need Jack to be paid $100,000 for this. And- and recognized. That's what I want the H3H3 army. I, your general, Fupish Maximus, command you. We must get justice for Jack's films. For this deep dab. And then it hit me. I can make a creator code. Because if Fortnite is gonna put this move behind a paywall, I may as well benefit from it a little bit. So as of yesterday, I do he set up the code, which I, which, well, he's just going and making them more money. <laughs> you know what I mean? He said he made three hundred bucks from it. They probably give him like one percent. Yeah. We demand justice. This whole episode is about stealing, and it's not okay. Tim, so here we go. Tim Sweeney, Epic Games on Twitter. You know, I saw this guy's Twitter account. He's the head of a fucking video game company. This guy should be well familiar with tech. Look at his profile picture. <laughs> what? May I ask what the fuck? <laughs> 140p. Tim Pixel. Tim Pixel. By the way, Tim I looked Apple. it up. Uh, for every 10,000 V-Bucks spent uh, towards um, that purchase, Jack gets 5 bucks. So it's basically 5%. Gross. But, yeah. So the fact that he made 300 means that, do the math for me real quick. Oh, 300? Yeah, I mean, uh... Crunch those numbers? Crunch the numbers. <laughs> I mean, it means that they sold like tens of thousands, right? Yeah, and that's just the people that use his code. Which is probably com comparatively almost nothing. <laughs> yeah. Right. If, at the very <laughs> least, they should just auto-apply his code to anybody buying that. You know what I mean? Like, at least give him that five percent right. universal. Yes. Now it's yes. only five percent for people that know his yes. code. So. Do they have Epic Games customer service Twitter? I, I want to give people. I we need a call to action here because clearly Team Team Pixel Todd or whatever his name is <laughs> isn't going to hear it. Let's hit up Epic Games and say we demand justice for Jack. Justice We're, for Jack. The Fupa Army is here. We are here. We are Legion. We do not forget or forgive. Jack's Films owns the deep dab, and we, maybe, should I let them word it? <laughs> we demand action for Jack's Films. I think they can word their own twist. Just angry, we, he, just, he demands to be compensated for this. Epic Games. Also, that move is probably a real hit. Yes, They're exactly. probably going to sell a lot. But like, it's... Six thousand is how much was sold that Epic made for him to make three hundred. But again, I, uh, I'm sure they sold way more than that. Would be more. Bro, they're gonna sell. So, they're the gonna make hundreds of thousands code. of dollars from that. Yeah. So, t do you think this? When did he tweet last? Oh, he retweeted something seven hours ago. So hit up t Tim Sweeney, and also mention ch to update his profile pic too. He, he owns a tech company for Christ's sake. <laughs> Maybe he thinks it's an epic. Maybe he thinks it's funny. Irony gag. I guess. Well, either way, tweet his ass. Let's see what he's been up to. He's talking shit about Valve. <laughs> Give me a break. Yeah. Let's get justice for our boy Jack. This is unacceptable. Oh, that's me. My gut. Alright. Okay, let's move on. Uh, I'm panicking slightly. Dead air. I closed my document. 
You look <laughs> entertained them. Uh, what's up, mom army? <laughs> 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 the next thing up in your dock is OJ. If you want to give a little intro to this. No, I'm just going to. Yeah. <laughs> OJ Simpson is a man with a <laughs> knife who killed two people. Was it in the 90s? Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, mid-90s. Mid-90s. Uh, for our younger audience, I mean, everybody knows OJ, but OJ was a phenomenal. He was a superstar basketball player. Basketball player. No, he wasn't. Football. football. I meant, uh, thank you. Uh, football and he had started dabbling in movies as well. And he's become quite a famous actor He was pretty much one of the most famous. He was kind of like LeBron James of the time if I'm being honest. He was like a household name um, Is in the naked gun naked gun exactly and he was a very likable guy to it I mean, I everyone loves seeing him on screen. He was a great football player. He had it all going on except uh, until one day um his wife and lover were found murdered viciously, yada, yada, yada. He went on trial. Ex-wife, by the way. Ex-wife. They were divorced. Okay, thank you. Um, he, there, there was this trial that was, like, televised. It was, like, this, the biggest freaking. They were calling it the trial of the century, really, and it was. In fact, there's a great documentary about it we watched on, H, on mm, Netflix. Netflix, yeah. The, pe- uh, people, the People versus O.J. Simpson or something. Yeah, that's what it's called. Oh, yeah. so good. If you don't, if definitely. you haven't followed that whole saga, yeah, it's definitely watch that. Really good. Um, so uh, he was also investigated for domestic violence while he was married to Nicole Brown, who was his murdered ex wife. They got a divorce, yada, yada, yada. There was all this crazy things, but anyway, they found a glove and the murder weapon. They found his, his, I don't even know how the fuck he got off, but everyone now just is, is like because common everyone knowledge. Everyone were such fans of him; people didn't want to believe it. N- I think it became a race issue. It, w- it was that a race too. card. Yeah, I it, mean that was part of it, and the other big part of it was the police were crooked as fuck. Well, and most of their evidence, their their proof hinged on DNA evidence, and that was a very new concept at the time. And mm. most people think that the jurors just didn't understand how legit the fact that his DNA was all over the crime scene. That that they didn't realize how significant that was. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and there was one pivotal moment that's kind of historic. Is like in the documentary they show what a big deal it was, but apparently in case law you never want to give the defendant control of key um, evidence. So they gave OJ the glove that was found to be the the mm-hmm. glove that were they were murdered in, but he wore a glove and he twisted his thumb around and shit and to make it look like, like the glove didn't fit. fit. And so there's this famous line, if the if it don't fit, you must acquit. I thought he, he was wearing a, like a plastic glove. Mm-hmm. He was. Yeah, yeah, they had to because it was evidence. So yes. They didn't want to contaminate it. Yeah. But also he was like, you know, not. it's easy It's easy to like jet your thumb out and be like, it doesn't go on, mm-hmm. you know. It's also just like, what does the glove being slightly small have to do? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but again, that's why, that's why. The attorney was like, don't give the central piece of evidence to the defendant because they can do do dumb Mm -hmm. shit like that. And then all of a sudden there's doubt in people's mind. Anyway, this guy's such a such a winner. He was acquitted of murder and he was uh, but he was found. um, He was found to be at fault in civil case. So the family of the murdered pseudo J. Simpson for wrongful death and they actually won. Isn't, Isn't that a trip? Yeah. Um, so he's been paying that, their family off for many years. And then in Vegas, him being the winner and fantastic dude that he is, he committed rob- he armed robbery, stealing back his own memorabilia from a Vegas <laughs> casino. And he served nine years in prison for that. Can you imagine getting off on murder and then going to prison for some dumbass shit like that? Stealing your And at what jersey? point was the, the chase? So the, there was this famous chase that was during the trial mm-hmm. where he's like, I'm going to Mexico. He was in this white Bronco. He had a gun to his head. He's like, I'm going to Mexico. I'm going to kill myself. Mm-hmm. Whatever. He's fucking crazy. So anyway, the whole point of all this recap is that he is on Twitter. <laughs> he opened a Twitter account and everybody's been clowning on him. It's been so good. I have so much here. This is one of my favorite stories of the year. It's so much fun. <laughs> Now, first of all, the great first fact is that he opened his Twitter account on the 25th anniversary of the murder. Is that a coincidence or is that uh, OJ? No way it's a coincidence. 
well, another thing about OJ is that he wrote a book called If I Did It. Mm-hmm. And it was so grotesque that nobody would publish it. Really? Yeah. I guess someone was going to publish it and everyone's like, dude, that's fucked up. And then they dropped him. And he wrote, it was a, it was a hypothetical account of if he did it. Ugh. You believe that? Sounds psycho. Yeah, he is a psycho. So let's go here and see the OJ Simpson, the real OJ 32, baby. What's the 32? <laughs> I think there's just a lot of parody <laughs> accounts. No, that was his number. <laughs> oh, oh, that was his number. The banner at the top. Wow. There you oh, have it. Oh, there it is. Come on. So at about 30 mi- <laughs> this is this gets so good, you guys. So after about 30 minutes of making his account, somebody hacked it <laughs> and starts tweeting shit. This is the real OJ 32. Where the bitch is at? I killed her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I didn't kill anybody. Let's link R. Kelly. There's <laughs> one where there's a racial slur here that I don't want to show, but some they say the N word. Yeah, and yeah. So I, I, I see. And then it shows here, <laughs> account suspended. <laughs> but he recovered his account. <laughs> Can you? Imagine? I just love that it took like fucking 20 minutes for I somebody to get into that shit. And be tweeting, I killed her. <laughs> Can you imagine? Because he made a video when he first made it to prove it was him. Where is that video? I thought he linked it. I think it if you just scroll top. down, it's actually, yeah, it's, it's still up. Here. It's the it first. Is this is uh, yours truly. Yeah, here we go. Hello, Twitter world. This is uh, yours truly. Wait, what is this word? one? Why is there... S- no, no, I... You yeah. know, for years, people have been He's been posting a couple videos. If you go all the way... That's the intro. Okay, This there. is yours truly. Now, okay. coming soon to Twitter, you'll get to read all my thoughts and opinions on just about everything. Now, there's a lot of fake OJ accounts out there. So, this one, at the real OJ32, is the only official one. So, this should be a lot of fun. <laughs> I got a little getting even to do. So, God bless. Take care. Sorry? Getting Let's even not have... Do? do you know what happens when OJ gets even? <laughs> yeah. Why did he? What is he getting even about? <laughs> also, why is what's with this people? It's got the same vibe as Garth, uh, Facebook video. I like Whoa. that. Where it's like, I, I'm just cool. We're gonna get close. This yeah. is raw. I'm breaking down the walls between you like and me. <laughs> and I really like that. I love watching all of his videos. What else we got here? But I, he, when he said I got getting even to do, I was like, motherfucker, this guy's threatening my life. <laughs> hey, Twitter world. You know, for hey, years, Twitter world. people have been able to say whatever they want to say about me okay. with no accountability. But now I get to challenge a lot of that. Bro, it's Twitter. There's no accountability. <laughs> More importantly, I'll be able to talk about everything, especially sports, fantasy, football, and even politics. But for now, let me just say to my fellow fathers out there, happy Father's Day. And God bless. Happy Father's Day to Ron and Nicole. His parents, who I was murdered. Was he ever a father? Yes. He what? Yes, he, he has, has kids. kids. That's right. Every every video he made has a has a little touch of like I'm of a threat. Yeah. I'm getting even. Like you I guys, got a score to settle. All this time, you guys thought you could say whatever you <laughs> yeah. want about me. He's definitely murdered them. Not anymore. So here, let's see if there's any threats in the third one. Oh, it's truly. You know, this is my first venture into the social media world, and uh, it's amazing, <laughs> you know, especially how quickly they can put up counterfeit sites. Anyway, we'll deal with that. Um, we'll deal, we'll with, deal that. with that. Exactly. I've been involved in the sports world. And I this is his public face well, of him trying to be pretty cool. Much what we'll be talking about, but once in a while, I'm going to go off to- topic and talk about something else, uh, and this is one of those times, you know. <laughs> Bob Kardashian, he's like a brother to me. He's a great guy. He met and married uh, Chris, and they really had a terrific time together when they were together. Uh, unfortunately, that I killed ended. them. Oh, but never, and I want to stress, never in any way, shape, or form had I ever had any interest in Chris romantically. Bro, or what are you talking and I about? <laughs> never got any indication. Well, there's, lo- that she there's had a long-running rumor me, that so. he is what is it? Chloe? Chloe Kardashian's real father. Oh wow. Oh. Uh. Know if there's any well, validity to that? He's denying it, obviously. What did he say? He said, uh, "We'll take care of that later." <laughs> <laughs> All of these stories are just bogus, bad, 
you know, tasteless. Let's get uh, you on more and prove it. Chloe, <laughs> uh, like all the girls I'm very proud of, just like I know Bob would be uh, if he was here, but the simple facts of the matter is uh, she's not mine. Now, one of the people who spread what? in this rumor is a guy that the people? media loves to say is my manager. I had one manager in my whole life, Chuck Barnes, when I came out of USC for three years. Unfortunately, he died about 45 years ago. But Killed him. Under he his died, I <laughs> my own office with uh, the help of Skip Taft, my lawyer, my um, two assistants, Marilyn O'Brien, the late Marilyn O'Brien. and Kathy Why Brandon. is everyone dead? <laughs> <laughs> my two assistants, the late Marilyn O'Brien. Damn, OJ. <laughs> um, and I've always managed my own affairs, and I like to think very successfully. So when you see these guys like Norm and these guys claim that they are my um, manager, it's just not true. I may have done a deal here or there with them, you but take care of none of these guys yeah, have ever and, and, uh, done anything remotely like And I'll make sure they never see the sun again. Event, <laughs> that's it for today. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. Take care. Bro, right. for a f it's Happy Father's Day, scary. sending out threats to the world. Yeah, so, anyway, this is what OJ's been up to, but now, so this shit, oh my <laughs> god, this part is insane. So there's a parody account of OJ Simpson, there's been so many of them, because he's not been on Twitter, of OJ with a knife, and he makes all these jokes about how OJ killed mm -hmm. uh, the two, Nicole and, uh, what, what was her boyfriend's name? Nicole and... Ron Goldman. Ron Goldman. And he starts threatening him in the DMs, bro. Like, OJ doesn't realize that, because he's so new. He doesn't understand that DMs aren't actually private. And just just take this Man, out. you would never guess who the hell just messaged me on Twitter in a DM. <laughs> Look at this shit. OJ Simpson just messaged me. All right. Look at this. So it's a normal, you know, he's complaining and everything, right? Delete this account or I will have my lawyer remove it for false misleading content I didn't post. So I'm like, all right, cool, you know, my whatever, late it's a parody account. <laughs> I don't think he knows that you're allowed to have a parody account on Twitter or not, but I do this. I said, uh, and if I don't, you're going to stab me too. In reality, I, <laughs> I ain't lying. Part. You, me, and millions know the truth. You tripping over a parody account, LOL. Welcome to Twitter, bro. Dude, and that's so what good. I put, you know. Can you imagine this guy? And uh, he said, like I said, delete this parody account. <laughs> bro, imagine you made a OJ parody account to slam dunk on him, and then OJ's DMing you all but her. That's the dream for like, <laughs> one of these internet trolls. But lots. And he only has like 300 followers, right? It's yeah. It's a small thing. I guess, yes, dude. Watch this fuck around and uh he said like i said delete this parody account as you call it or face serious consequences by me i'll find your ass one way or another so don't mess with me i got nothing to lose grow up okay so i sent his ass a dagger and a thumbs up right look what his ass sent me like for oh real God. dude that's crazy he sent him a knife and i go what well, you gonna kill me too See, this is the shit got your ass locked up the, f the second time and should have been the first. Get it together and take your pills, bruh. Bruh. It's a parody he's account. He's dunking on OJ. And just for you guys it. that are going to say this shit's fake. And now he's... Oh. Right. No, that's the... Yeah. Oh. This is just too much. Fuck. The real OJ32. He's proven it. Come on, computer. This is his shit, bro. <laughs> so there's a there's a update video as well. It's crazy shit. <laughs> the continue uh, the conversation continues. Again. So OJ DMs me again. <laughs> okay, look check this out. It's his actual account. I'm gonna click it here in a minute and show you guys. He continues with the other DM. He goes, think I'm playing, motherfucker. Can you believe this? And I go, Sally, nope. <laughs> look, if you're a little, look, if my little Twitter account with 300 followers bugs you that much, then, man, you weak as fuck. Okay, so, uh, I only get 351 followers. This, guy, this, this dude's poor guy. Tripping. What? Look at all those uh, knives. Seen, your, seen that video you just posted about me, think I'm playing? 
tired of all your bullshit. I will, I will find, find your, your ass, ass and, and cut, cut you. you. Don't believe me? Just watch and see, bitch. What is he go, thinking? Dude, there are other, there are others that literally, literally have more followers than me, <laughs> and more convincing than mine. Left my ass off. You gonna, you gonna cut me? <laughs> awesome is that what you <laughs> said to Nicole? Look and I guess that fucking look at this. Blowing up fucking rage with all knife emojis. You he goes, next. Next. I mean, come on. This literally is <laughs> the OJ. It's the real OJ. so wild. I wonder if this is like okay, and I go could get him in legal trouble. Man, kind of. Well, went out of your way to single me out. That's all good. I don't mind it comes with having a parody account. This actually is funny to me. He goes, just, <laughs> what just idiot. wait. I'm gonna blast your ass all over Twitter. <laughs> All okay. over Twitter, With a like, knife. What, I go, down? cool, and when you do, I'll be here. <laughs> no, first, let's get another <laughs> knife emoji. <laughs> Bro, OJ should not be sending <laughs> knife crazy, emojis. Guys. This dude's gone psycho. <laughs> if, you, if you're if you OJ Simpson's brother. Oh, he's still typing. Dude, he's Whoa. fucking messaging me. Oh, my God. Right now. OJ Simpson, oh if there's one emoji you should not what be using, fuck? it's a knife emoji. Yeah. Look. Crazy. I thought I'd be getting even. I got a little mm-hmm. getting even to do. What a fucking psycho. Yeah, I wonder if that oh. can get his ass back in prison for sending knife emojis. Because when it comes from a known murderer, that comes a little more than just goofing around. I just, I wonder if he has anyone around him. Like, is no one advising him? He's too old school. He's on his phone on Twitter. Nobody knows what OJ's doing on his, on Twitter. Here, these are some new parody accounts now that are popping up. O, Real OJ32. Can't believe these mother effers got my name wrong. <laughs> and he's got the black glove. <laughs> this <is> RJ. <laughs> With the black glove and blood on a Starbucks. Mm, beautiful. That one's not going to make him happy. He blocked the Dolan Dark, apparently. So congratulations mm-hmm. to Dolan Dark. Dolan Dark said, could I get your opinion on how you got away with murdering your wife? <laughs> You've been blocked. Oh, Jay, you're not ready for Twitter, bro. No. Bruh. Bruh. Yeah, you can't just walk away from technology and come back on Twitter. Especially as, oh, <laughs> Jay. Um, I can't believe it. Okay, and just to put a little perfect bow on top of this, here somebody linked this old Did interview you do clip. It? Um... Bef- yeah, enjoy this. Got me started. Did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Nope. Did not do it. He's like, yep. <laughs> he killed that bitch. He said to me that uh, he had a surprise for me, and I genuinely was surprised. I think it was his idea of a joke. And this is it. Watch the Sheila. <laughs> oh, you missed it. Okay. You really missed it. <laughs> Did not do it. After we finished filming, OJ said to me that uh, he had a surprise for me, and I genuinely was surprised. I think it was his idea of a joke. And this is it. Oh my god. Can, uh, so for people who are listening to audio, she opened the door and he had a knife in his hand and was doing like the psycho like, eh, 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 eh. Oh, was it banana? It was a banana, yeah. And then he did these huge crazy eyes at the camera afterwards. Crazy. Wow. Yeah, OJ something else, man. But I I mean, I think OJ threatening a parody account with knives will go down as one of my favorite things we've ever watched yeah. on the show. So good. Oh, speaking of um speaking of people who shouldn't be on Twitter, back on Twitter, Bill Cosby, America's dad, is on Twitter to wish everybody a happy Father's Day. Now, first, before I read it to you, let's enjoy his banner. His banner is just... <laughs> I'm not really sure what's going on here. Why is it all on the left side? <laughs> it's all on the left side. And then and then when you click his logo, it's Bill Cosby Far From Finished. Order now on Amazon. Is that really available on Amazon? Uh-huh. The jello and the pudding. 
you put the pudding in the jello. Ugh, I'm so bad at impressions. But, and then so this is like real old people uh, Facebook <laughs> shit. So then he t- makes a happy dad tweet, and he tweets the same exact thing three times. Now it's not him, right? Because he's in prison. I right. don't know. I saw someone say that it's his wife running. Yeah, it's got to be somebody. Well, I was like, good for you, Bill. You can use Twitter in prison. I didn't know that. <laughs> hey, 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 it's America's dad. I know it's late, but to all the dads, it's an honor to be called a father. So let's make today a renewed oath to fulfill our purpose, strengthen our families, and not to drug women and r- roofie them. No. And then he <laughs> tweets the same thing three times. <laughs> Literally the same exact message. Hey, 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 it's America's dad. I know it's late. <laughs> but then he added a hashtag, Happy Father's Day, with a little video. Got left out. Now this country is going The video to actually has no rel- uh, relevance have, at all. I have to slay war. America kept breaking up the black man's it's, family. It's about breaking up uh, black families. It's an awful history to teach. It's got... Now if you want to look history right straight in the eye, you're going to get a black eye. What happened, Shredder? Shredder. And three times a charm. Hey, 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 it's Father's Day. Yeah. Yes. Also, I think they keep using this, like, hashtag free Bill Cosby. Oh, for real? In the tweets. Well, they maintain his innocence to this day, but... It's all set up. Let's see. Do we, did we get a yeah, free like, Bill Cosby? Yeah, look at that first tweet, for example. Juneteenth, continue to raise hell. Central Park Five, free Bill Cosby. They're like, whoa, let's not mix those. <laughs> let's not mix those yeah. causes. <laughs> That's so funny. March for freedom. Uh, uh, gay rights. Um, women's choice. Free Bill Cosby. It's like, whoa, let's not lump those all together. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Love it. What do you think about this? I saw this and it kind of shocked me. Kim K. I'm fascinated with Kim K. Can't stop talking about her. This is her mom's hand. She invented this thing, body, or grandma, body makeup. Let me show you this. It it is pretty. Did she? Well, it's a product. product, Yeah, she probably didn't invent it. But it is the, it it, wor- it does work remarkably well. But yeah, they probably do this like on uh, corners. Probably been using this shit for hundreds of years. <laughs> I was gonna say that. Yeah, I was mean, but corners. Yeah. Well, the people who like take care of dead bodies for sure. Oh, dead body, yeah. They make them look nice and stuff. <laughs> She's like, I just took this straight from the corners. <laughs> you can look good while you're still alive. So she does kind of explain where her makeup guy puts it on her. Mm-hmm. And she's like, he always had this like small supply of this product that we could never find anywhere. Mm-hmm. So we made it ourselves. So I wonder if they did get it somewhere like that. The Undertaker. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what's the big deal anyway? It's just like a beige arm color. It's like foundation, right? Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, oh, I mean, the, the idea of walking around with makeup. Well, let me play the video. Again, shit, eight. Walking around with makeup on your dancer? arm. <gasps> oh, it's gonna get makeup everywhere, sure. right? That's what I don't get. See you dance. But I mean, obviously, it looks right amazing. Oh my goodness, look yeah. at the difference. And I wanna be a rapper. A rapper. And I wanna be a singer. You make a beautiful dancer. <laughs> That's amazing. How long does that stay on? Uh, it rubs right off. I would say... For someone my age, isn't that amazing? I mean, for me, it stays on really all day. Uh-huh. She puts it so on. You're not touching um, anything. If you walk around like this. <laughs> and. And. That looks so much better. And. Hides all the purple. Not that it I does, like it does. I mean, it does work really it well. It works. It's pretty incredible. But you don't work. I think if you can't do anything. Thin, these, you know, <laughs> and now, you Grandma, know. you're ready to, for the open casket funeral. <laughs> Imagine you're going to. <laughs> That's so dark. I'm sorry, but it's true. That's what this is. What coroners do? You're going to someone's house and they have like a white couch and they're like, "Have a seat." And you're and, like, no. right, right. You can't tell <laughs> because obviously, if you saw a girl who was wearing makeup, put her face. 
<laughs> couch. It would come up all fucked up. But now Nana, who's so old she forgot she's got makeup on her arms, <laughs> sits down. <laughs> it's like, why is every time Nana's over here, our couch gets all smudged up with brown? Here, Nana, put on the... We've got your makeup on. Now here's the casket if you want to just rest here. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, They're just, it's like rehearsal. Okay. What sorry. I don't like is that. <laughs> what? Let a me dancer? speak for women for a moment. Yeah. They already got to worry about so much. Now we got to worry about this Preach. too. Got to put makeup on our body. On your freaking hand? Can't we have? Come on. Not, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Who are you kidding? You. I mean, on one hand, Kim Kardashian just wants to sell more product. She's like, oh well, fucking arms. Let's cover the arms. But it's like, think of the people, man. Kim and Kardashian's like, walking around know. with arm makeup. It will. I think if you set it, I see, think, it's like a little bit of transfer. I think that's supposed to be powder. Well, we yeah, but she look how powder, she lightly dabs it. Yeah, it. if and that I happened on my really couch, hard, I would so. not be She's happy. Like, do that, look how it doesn't come off. <laughs> a transfer. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I think that's a great point, Hila. It's like, can we just let the ladies have a break? We got to worry about our hair, about Preach. this and that, eyebrows, hair. It's Black. endless. Now we gotta put makeup on our body. Anal bleaching. <laughs> Never ends. Come on! I mean, seriously, <laughs> think about anal bleaching. Like, how, like, that's the ultimate. You gotta worry about how your anus looks. Like, <laughs> like dude, give me a break over here, huh? I told you to talk to me nice, Ethan. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's a really good point. But these makeup girls, they're just, they're unreasonably rich, and it kind of pissing me off lately. Because I was talking about last episode, I'm not mm -hmm. becoming a billionaire selling clothing. You know what's fucked up about the makeup? They get you hooked. It's like a drug. They upcharge your ass. It costs like 20 cents to make. They charge you 50 bucks. So already their margin, insane. But it's a consumable product, unlike clothing, that can last forever if you buy a good product. Mm. So they consume it. And then they get addicted, too, where it's like, oh, I can't go outside. Unless I have my makeup, I don't feel confident, I don't feel like myself. Mm -hmm. And I like this one, so now I'm gonna buy, 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 buy. And you have these girls spending $500,000 a month on makeup. I got this comment a lot, like, my mom w was just here telling me, like, yesterday, you're so lucky that you don't need makeup, but I just, I don't know how I feel about that statement. I don't know if I'm being, like, unfair, but I don't think anyone needs makeup. No. I think you're, you've never worn makeup, and therefore people are used to seeing you without makeup. Yeah. It, the, I mean, it, sometimes I look like I just woke up, even though I didn't, because I'm not wearing makeup, and I can look pale or mm -hmm. whatever, but, but that's just how I look. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it. I think most women, it's just a matter of how you're used to seeing yourself. Mm -hmm. That applies to guys, too. And so you, you draw your confidence and your normalness by when you look in the mirror and you see, okay, that's what I'm used to seeing. So, so if girls never wore makeup to begin with, and that's how they were used to seeing themselves, they wouldn't be addicted to it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where you, like, like I've had that experience when I'll, I'll just shave all of a sudden, and I mm -hmm. look totally normal right, to everyone else. So but I'm like, oh my God, I can't go outside. Yeah. I'm so embarrassed. I am so, yeah. I'm so ugly. I'm disgusting. I'm not going, I'm not leaving the house. I remember one time in college, I shaved. I thought I looked so bad, I wouldn't even go downstairs. <laughs> and I and I bet girls feel the same way about makeup because mm -hmm. they're used to seeing themselves like that. Obviously, if your face is shaved, every guy walks around with a shaved face. Nobody's going to look at you any different. Yeah. It's just a matter of... They but they get you addicted. They're, they make you feel like you need it. And then, once you start using it, you can't see yourself without it. Mm -hmm. And now they're fucking selling you arm makeup. Nipple makeup. <laughs> anal bleach. Jeez. Lip gloss, but seriously, Jeez. but seriously, you got the <laughs> lipstick, you've got the gloss, you got the eyeliner, you got the paint. It's like how many fucking sh makeups you do we need? I mean, seriously, how much do girls spend on makeup every month? I don't even know. I've hundreds, never, hundreds. I've never been down with the makeup. <laughs> I personally don't feel like my. I feel like I'm dirty when I have makeup on. Like I feel like I can't touch my face. Yeah, because something's gonna come off. I wouldn't want to walk around with like Vaseline on my face. It just seems so gross. But you get but. It's, so, but the but it's expensive. Yes, it's very expensive. And just think about all these rich, all these like beauty people who are popping up, and you keep hearing about how rich they are. It's like, yeah, Jeffrey Star, uh, Kylie Jenner. 
It's like even fucking Tati or whatever, all this stupid low level shit, they're making millions of dollars because it's just such a fucking, I don't want to say con, but it's like a sleazy business. It's like a drug dealer. Mm-hmm. You got crazy margins. You got people addicted. You got people that they need more. They're always needing more. That's what I'm saying. I'm in the wrong business. I got to start selling Fooper Trooper makeup because I'm not ever going to become a billionaire selling I shirts. Feel like people who are into makeup are probably. We'll probably completely disagree with what we're saying right now because we're like. Sim- I don't think so. I think they know. The whole. I think they know. You and their do, heart. You can do makeup as an art form, like really. Yes, not every day though. Yeah. And a lot of girls, they blood up, slop it on. They slop it on. Ela, when you were uh, when you were growing up, did you uh, use makeup like in high school? Never. Never. Did you have? I don't acne own at all when you were a kid. I, I think that's yeah. where a lot of girls start with it. Is they're like ashamed of having a bunch of pimples. I was ashamed then, of my pimples for yeah, sure. But you just rocked it. Anyways. But. You know, I think you just didn't like. I think Ela has a tactile issue, like sunscreen. You just don't like stuff yeah. on your face, right? So you never went through the process of wearing the makeup, and now you came out of it, and everyone's like, "Oh, you're so lucky you don't need makeup." It's like, no, you, we're all just used to me not wearing makeup. Mm-hmm. Women are—they're all beautiful. They all are beautiful without makeup. Yeah. It's just what you're used to seeing. I don't understand these before and afters. Whenever I see like makeup before and after, um. Most of the times, it's my like brother not was that showing me um, an article about girls during labor. They'll bring their makeup set for the pictures and um, do like complete crazy makeup. Guys, then you take a picture that's like gonna be your big picture with the baby. That's mental illness. Do you understand how insane that is? During labor, that is so insane, and I totally believe it. <laughs> you know. So I kind of think, I think makeup's a racket. Why is Kylie Jenner a billionaire? Why is Jeffree Star, like, a fucking trillionaire? Who fucking cares, dude? You know? I'm pissed! (laughs) That I'm not making that much money. We need to make clothes that, like, evaporate. How do we make clothes that you can eat and they evaporate on your potty? (laughs) (laughs) Not making enough money with this fucking clothing shit. Um, okay, there's two more videos I want to watch. Judge Judy kicks out a dude for having too much fun. You can watch Judge Judy. She breaks this poor guy's heart. He's having such a fun time. Apparently he was laughing too loud, and she didn't like it. But just watch this, I mean. I thought so. Uh-oh. You don't want to eat The gaze of Judy. No, it's not my life. It's not her life. It's not Bird's life. <laughs> Out. Did what? you hear what I said? You know what I'm looking at. You got my eyes? Blue, <laughs> black. Out. Out. It's like a Tim and Eric sketch. Me? Should it be you? What did Out. he do? He looks mortified. He laughed too hard. Say he enjoyed nothing. himself too much. And then the want. ponytail. Oh, the ponytail. <laughs> yeah, he has a ponytail. That's why. <laughs> but everyone was laughing. He laughed I, too hard. I'm sure in the studio was probably coming off louder than what we could hear. Um, I guess she thought he was doing some kind of shenanigans. Maybe to be heard or something in the episode. But he looks Black. absolutely mortified. Out. Out. Yeah. Should it be you? Out. <laughs> Just go. Say I love the cold. It's like <laughs> I took the day off to come watch yeah. this show. You're my favorite. <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> Imagine, like, you travel to L.A. You love Judge Judy. you finally there. You're loving every second. You're laughing. You're enjoying yourself. And Judge Judy's like, you, get the fuck out. <laughs> and then the cult of Judy, it's almost like everyone else there is about to start spitting on him, too, on the way out. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. You're not one of us. <laughs> Fucking amazing. Ain't nothing. You know what's the best, too? They didn't cut this out. No, she loves it. She didn't she cut it out. Part she, of her character. This guy didn't sign up to be publicly shamed. <laughs> He's just come to enjoy the show, yet she's kept in this part where she's publicly shaming this pedestrian and showing his face, close-ups of his face. <laughs> Get out! <laughs> this poor guy! 
Thank you. You're welcome. What did he, what did he do? It's not life, <laughs> Mr. Cuffey. It's what a life I think they interview be. him afterwards. Some lies. You think it's a good life? It is what it is. No, it's not what it is, Mr. Cuffey. It's what you make it. Life is what... Oh, we got a little life lesson at the end there, too. Huh. Remember, Mr. Cuffey. Get out! <laughs> oh, was that little Zanny? Yeah, that's Zanny. <laughs> Get out! Get out! <laughs> <laughs> you, you saw that, right? Yeah. yeah. I watched the whole episode. You did? <laughs> yeah. Was How great. was it? Thank you. Um, so congratulations to I that. I like guy. this podcast when I'm not in it. <laughs> you do? <laughs> Thank you. I can't watch it when I'm in it. No, it's I know I don't like I watched it with you part of it. <laughs> and I okay, I, I I push the button to pause it and it's a little delayed and then it goes back. And then I pause it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's beside the point. I don't like watching it, and I'll tell you why, because when I come in here and perform, I want to do it in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it about, like, oh, well, what do I think about that? Or mm -hmm. I don't want to be self-aware at all, really, as little as possible. So when I watch, I mean, there are certain points, I think, especially in the beginning, where we were having audio issues, or I have a tendency to talk over the guests, or I have bad habits on the mic where I'll be like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, something I'm still working on. But I think for the most part, at least now, I like to just be here in a vacuum as much as possible. I, I don't agree. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want my own doubts in my head, and I don't want the audience's voices in my head either. Because at some point, it was getting hard to express yourself without, even before saying anything, you already start thinking, well, what are they going to think about what I'm going to say? That's right. And it's like paralyzing. You end up not saying anything. You you lose your authenticity in, in a way, yeah. which is the reason you have to assume why people are watching to begin with, is that we're here hanging out and I'm expressing myself authentically. So, you, I think as a performer, you don't want to watch too much of your stuff. That's at least for me. Like I think you, you especially something like this podcast when it's like very long off the cuff. format yeah. and not edited and I mean it's pretty cringy watching yourself and you're like <laughs> oh I sound like that I said that uh, you know or that, like why am I itching right yeah, here right. right now and like I'm plucking a fucking that's probably good to know <laughs> when I was like trying to get an eyebrow hair out for thirty minutes <laughs> a little distracting cheers <laughs> um this is so let's wrap it up here with a Trump meme. And again, I'm not getting political on your asses. We can all appreciate this left and right. Ela, you probably haven't seen this. Tell me what you think. No, at some point, I might. But at some point, I hope they get it because it's, <laughs> it's a fantastic financial statement. It's a fantastic financial statement. And uh, let's do that over. He's coughing in the middle of my answer. Yeah, okay. I don't like that, you know? Uh, when like, your hey, chief of staff. If you're going to cough, please. I love how he's like, it's your <laughs> chief of staff. <laughs> Like he's clowning his chief of staff in front of the cameras. I like how he's like, I don't like that, you know? And it's yeah. like, no, I don't know. But there, do he goes, you should go outside, but they're inside a closed room. Like, there's really, and a cough is very spontaneous. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure how you can criticize someone for that. But I wonder if he was trying to tell him to be like, oof, don't go there. <laughs> oh, 100%. I That's think, how I interpreted it. Yeah. Oh, at some wow. point, really? I might. But at some point, I'll He's starting to talk it, about his financial a, statement. It's a fantastic He's like, don't talk financial about that. statement. Uh -huh. It's a fantastic financial statement. And Trump's processing and, uh, uh, it right now. Let's do that over. He's coughing in the middle of my answer. Yeah. Okay. I don't like that, you know? I don't like your chief of staff. If you're going to cough, please yeah, leave the room. Get, and so he covers oh, it up wow. by being like, uh, tries to be super offended by the cough. But I think he was like, bro, don't go there on the financial statements. So you think they're both understanding the... Yes. Because that, that was kind of, you could cough way more quiet than that. The guy was like, bleh, bleh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I agree that, I think he was trying to interrupt him, but I don't know. I thought it, When you watch the rest of this cough? clip, it kind of seems like Trump didn't pick up on it. But I he think Trump is overcompensating talking. to make it look like he was actually Maybe. upset mm -hmm. and that he didn't shift gear. Which was chest. very slick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he was a Fooled slick me. move. 40 chess, baby. You're not on the international level of... I thought there was only a cough going on here and a guy upset about the cough. Look, despite what a lot of liberals say, I do think Trump is a very intelligent, strategic guy. So, usually, like, like if you're in his position, how do you react if your chief of staff is being like, shut up, don't talk about that? How can you, how can you transition out of that and not make it look painfully obvious that... 
I you're, you, you don't want to talk about that and that your chief of staff is tipping you off mm-hmm. not to mention it. And this is kind of the best way possible. What about the rest of the clip, though? Does he actually stop talking about it after that? Let's watch. That it's a fantastic I think he does. financial statement. And uh, let's but do that over. He's you can, coughing you can in the see it in his head. Yeah. He's processing. Yeah. Uh, let's do but that But look, he's coughing after his cough, statement. he starts thinking. Yeah. And uh, let's do Sorry, that Eli. I know. I just want to catch the cough. It's a fantastic <laughs> financial statement. It's a fantastic financial statement. Oh, my God. I didn't get and, the cough. Uh, I'm sorry. I apologize to everybody. I'm just going back to the beginning. But at some point, I hope they get it because it's a fin- it's a fantastic financial statement. It's a fantastic financial statement. And uh, let's do that over. He's coughing in the middle of my answer. Yeah. Okay. I don't like that. You know. I don't when like your it. chief of staff. If you get a cough, please <laughs> leave the room. Get a shot of, and I'll, yeah. I'll come over here. Just, just can't. Coffee. You just can't. Just to change the shot. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Do you want to do that a little differently then? Yeah. Or? We just changed the angle. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So at some point. So at some point, I look forward to. So well, see, he was going back into. But what did he funny. say? He said. You, yeah, you, come on, for Christ's sake! I look, fo- I look yeah. forward to. Frankly, I'd like to have people see. I guess it is the my same. Friend. So maybe he was just butter, and we give Trump too much credit. <laughs> see, I think you're right about the chief of staff trying to give him a heads up. I, I just think he didn't pick up on it. But then why would he be so offended that he, like, imagine the chief of staff is, like, trying to tip him off, and then Trump doesn't get it, and it's just butthurt that he coughed. To be fair, I mean, Trump was a fucking TV star for 10 years, and on a Hollywood set, if you cough, yeah, you get kicked out. I mean, that's, you know, so. I guess we'll never know. Kind of falling back on his media training kind of thing. Just like his tax returns, we'll never know. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Great either way. Great fun either way. Shall we get, well, let's get one more update of Baby Theodore as we sign out here today. What is he doing right now? And we welcome back uh, Ela Klein from the Mom Army. <laughs> I urge everybody to call to action today. One, tweet at uh, Pixel Todd from Epic Games. <laughs> Todd. Find out the CEO of, of, of Epic Games and tell him that we demand justice for Jack. Mm-hmm. And also, make sure to go to TeddyFresh.com, because we have totally lost our minds. 50% <laughs> off. 50% off. Crazy. Teddy Fresh sale. TeddyFresh.com. 50% off that shit. It's good, though. It's not... <sighs> Cheers! <laughs> you were driving with me. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Cheers! Anyway, uh, it's good to have you back, Hila. Thank you. Yes, um, welcome back. It is nice awesome to be back. back. And by the way, yes, I want to say you did a great job. I did? Doing yeah. what? The last two episodes. Oh, thank you. Yo. <laughs> I watched them at home and I really enjoyed it. Wow. <laughs> Cheers! Thank you. <laughs> Look at you over here being all sweet and nice to me. Yep. What I do to appreciate it. What would I do to deserve this, huh? That's such a sweet wife over here. Forget about it, huh? <laughs> All right, guys. So let's just. Um, can you play it, Zach? Phil? The sup? Yeah. Yeah, double the sup. I don't think I have the sup on my sound. Zach, you don't have the sup? Oh, yeah. Yeah, here we go. All right, guys. Well, sup, army. We'll see you next week. We love you. Appreciate you. Wish you all the best. And for those reasons, I'm out. And uh, it's 13 minutes oh, long, God. so. I gotta stop it. Well, I leave it to Dan to cut us off. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.